All right, we're looking at logo icon sketches. Week two, this is the Friday edition. First up, Abigail, Babylon soap. This is a uh, natural soap that preserves youth. <clears throat> uh, looks like uh, the first one is a bar of soap with a leaf. Can we share the screen? Oh yeah, thank you. You're welcome. It's been one of these days, so. I know. I know. Uh, it looks like a bar of soap with a, a leaf. This is uh, a bunch of leaves. This is number three is an arch with a leaf above it. This is a, another bar of soap with a leaf in, on it, a pair of leaves. Um, this looks some sort of architecture. Uh, let's see, an archway with a leaf again. Another bar of soap with a leaf and number eight, a cinnamon stick, a desert palm. Hills with a palm, a pyramid with a leaf and an arch with a tree. So my initial reaction was that, you know, I'm not really sure what re research he did on Babylon, um, but you know, obviously the first connotation that comes to my mind is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, the hanging gardens of Babylon. Mm -hmm. how, you know, how, you know, because it was a desert, you know, they believe it to be like one of the first hydroponic systems where there was a system of pulleys that constantly kept everything in water as it grew. Um, so I just think like maybe a little bit more lush when I think of, you know, Babylon. And then secondly, I, I'm more drawn to the ziggurated. Um, this yeah, one. Seven. Yeah, because that to me is really more reminiscent of when I think of, you know, ancient, you know, that part of the ancient world, you know, Sumeria, you know, or, you know, all of that type of stuff and um, Babylon. But uh I think just there's just maybe just a little too much on the leaf motif. I would have liked to have seen some different directions. I guess there's a Babylon tree. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, yeah I, I think if you look at Babylon culture, imagery, patterns, things like that, that'll give you a lot more options for ideas. Because I don't really see anything here that makes a logo right now. The ziggurat is probably the most interesting. Mm -hmm. that's, so that's one. That one. And don't do bars of soap. I, I think when you talk about a beauty product and like, you know, youthful, you know, face soap, I, bars of soap seem off. It's kind of interesting. I'm looking up this Babylon tree most of it is like imagery with um like hookah lounges but um the trees are very they're very like um like willowy um yeah they're not like a desert palm no, like. no. yeah they're more like willow trees that really hang down so, hmm. interesting yeah and, and maybe that goes back to yeah they're very similar to the weeping willow um, maybe that kind of goes back to like the hanging gardens of Babylon. So yeah, maybe that's how the tree got its name, huh? Yeah. So just yeah, a little more research, so a little more variety. But. All right, sweet tooth gummies. These are the bright, fun Japanese anime gummies, and we have a submitted sketch. Um, so this looks like some Japanese lettering with a tooth in the background, little gummy bears. And it's sort of implying like a pictogram, sweet mm -hmm. tooth, I guess, ST. This looks like a, an alarm clock, right, let's see. More than a bear, yeah. Uh, yeah, the head of the bear. Um, ST again, with a tooth implied in the background. 
this makes me think of gold metal flower. <laughs> <laughs> a silhouette of a tooth and a gummy bear. It's an interesting take on the kind of doing the yin yang kind of thing with the Japanese culture, but it doesn't quite read um, clearly. So. <laughs> So one thing I would direct you at, g gummy bears are pretty um, common and well-known, but gummy, gummies don't have to be bears. They can be any shape you want. Um, so uh, you could also think of other fun animal characters besides bears that could represent your brand. Um, and since it's Japanese, you can pull from Japanese culture for some of those. Initials don't make great logos really, generally, unless you're like a big gigantic corporation of some type. So I like your fun little characters. I feel like you have some uh, interest maybe in doing characters as part of your logo. So I would say um, like the tooth maybe is one character, but maybe it could be other animals instead. What do you think? Um. Yeah, the characters are very cute. They seem like they would hit the target audience as well. Um, yeah, I, yeah, there's more exploration that way would be helpful. Um, so maybe number 12, kind of like number eight, if the, the bear was much bigger in the frame, in the containing shape. Maybe extending outside of the frame. Yeah, like popping the ears out a little bit. So those would be two, and then I would explore other, other potential characters that you could do. <clears throat> All right, Delanor, uh, stone soup, which is a soup mix, which allows you to make homemade soup very quickly. Um, it has a very homey feeling. Um, what you have here is a sketchbook page. What we're looking for is ideas place them in the template with the numbers so we can refer to them. Um, I see a bit of a visual exploration here, sort of bowls of soup, ladles and cans of soup and soup recipes. So think more, uh, uh, more symbolically of your imagery, uh, home, hearth, family, all those kind of things. Some of your keywords, look at those. Uh, you know, the, the fire under the big cauldron is probably okay as an image, but right now it's not executed like a logo. Um, so, and you need to put these in the uh, InDesign template. That's what I was going to say, the same thing. A can, drawing a can of soup for a soup product is not a logo. <laughs> It might be interesting to really try to play off of the stone soup. Like what is stone? It's like, you know, weighty and strong. And so maybe like, even like, you know, like if you were to say, you know, draw a picture of grandma, maybe she has more of a chiseled face. Yeah, yeah. that's an interesting take on it. So yeah, just think, think of how, you know, you can really, you know, grab the viewers, you know, and draw them into your product, but still, you know, give the connotation of being, you know, homey. All right, Levi, grandma's kitchen fudge. So this is fudge that has a secret ingredient, which is bourbon. So it's like uh, got a kick to it. Oh. It's a little bit of a bootlegger fun fudge type okay. of thing. So that's where grandma comes from. These sketches, um, which are not put into the template. I'm not sure what this document we're looking at is. Uh, you've written numbers next to them, which is good because we can tell there's only 10 instead of the 12 required. Um, it looks like the first one is a rainbow with an oven. Uh, this looks like a piece of fudge. I'm not sure it's what's not happening. It's hard for me to see what they are. Yeah. These sketches are very, uh, they're a bit uh, low contrast, kind of dark and not cropped well so that you can see them. Uh, if you use the InDesign template, it's actually really set up for that. So all the more. This, I assume, is grandma, no detail, uh, a house, a cube on a string. This looks like something, a piece of candy breaking open with hearts coming out. The initials. This looks like uh, maybe it's an oven with the rack out. 
another initials and stack of fudge. So grandma is a character that you could use, but you'd really have to articulate what that character looks like. She's a bit of a tough old broad, right? She's kind of like, uh, you know, she's sneaking the booze into the candy. So there's a bit of sort of uh, alternative, or what do you call it? Um, yeah, underhandedness, yeah. something yeah. funny. Yeah, it's intended to be a little bit funny. Uh, oven stoves don't really tell your brand story. Uh, neither do initials. Um, and then some of these are just visuals that don't seem to relate to anything, like just a house. I guess it's a budge. I'm looking at the grandma. It's almost like her torso and top could become a liquor bottle. But yeah, right? Like Mrs. Butterworth, but with bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you need to go back to the drawing board. I would articulate the grandma character and I would think of other things. Uh, look at, um, you know, artwork from the bootleg era, the 1920s and 30s. Uh, see if that lends you some inspiration. Uh, stay away from word marks and letters. Try to come up with an image that'll work for your brand. I concur. Yeah. All right. Nimke? Am I saying that Chunk right? Chunk soap. Chunk soap. This is tough soap for men who do hard labor and uh, have greasy hands. So, you know, everything from like uh, mechanics to lumberjacks. Um, so uh, you've got an anvil, which is sort of a visual exploration of a thing related to the brand, maybe. Uh, the word chunk articulated different ways, which doesn't really meet the requirements for the assignment. Uh, a little bar of soap with muscly arms. <laughs> Hi, I'm that's Chunk. <laughs> that's, a, that's kind of a fun character. So. Yeah. You want to think about your character's personality in terms of the target audience and what that's going to appeal to them. Um, the arm, people always get into this with the arm and then I always think of arm and hammer. Uh, this looks like a chunk taken off of the soap. The word mark a couple times, another chunk and a mountain. So, Character is okay. It needs to have some personality that matches your brand. And then what are the other elements that you could use? You know, are there tools? The and but the how does the anvil relate to your brand? Um, are there other characters? Are there people who use this product? Look at your competitors, look at how they they're visualizing it. Um like lava soap and stuff. Um so I find eight very interesting, but I rather than showing the piece like ripped off, I would just eliminate that piece. And I, it could actually be a very interesting in logo in the simplicity of it. Um, so with the the missing, yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, I'm just envisioning the text underneath. There's you know something so. Well, a simple, strong uh, image is what you're looking for for uh, a logo icon, um, which, you know, this kind of is. Looks... I'm wondering, like, you know, um, with the the chunk missing, like, um, you know, how, you know, other ways of showing clean. So, um, you know, you know, like there's some type of sparkliness to it, without, but you still have to keep the masculine feel. Um, yeah, look at uh, products for men, like things like uh, for beards and stuff like that, you know, and just sort of get some more of the imagery around that, help you get more inspiration. All right, this is Brandon, wasabi rice cakes. So this is a low fat, rice cake with a kick. You worked in color. Some nice drawings. I don't know why they're not in the InDesign template. Let's just zoom out. So uh, there's one. It looks like a pair of chopsticks with a sushi roll. 
sushi and chopsticks, sushi two, uh, this is three, sushi face. The product is sushi rice cakes, or what is it again? It's wasabi rice cakes. Oh, so it's spicy. They're spicy, but you know, so rice cakes are notoriously bland flavored, so these have a little kick to them. Um, strangely, you know, some of these products, which I made up out of my head, have come to life since <laughs> they actually exist now. I had a student once who, this is years ago, like years ago, um, pitched an idea to me called Pimp Juice. Uh. And I said, to her, I said, do you want a job when you graduate? And yeah. then years later, I saw the product called Pimp Juice. It wasn't his. But somebody else came up with it. <laughs> but uh, I didn't let him do it in my class. <laughs> yeah. Number seven is good. That was the one I was most drawn to. Because it has that rice cake feel for the hair. And then, you know, this silhouetted figure emerges. The flame sort of hovering over the rice cake. I think that's kind of interesting. Um, 12, let's see, what is 12? Kawaii, yeah. Kawaii, Kawaii, you know, the cute. Yeah, yeah, very popular. Yeah, that could work. So you got a, a few here in seven, nine, and 12 maybe. Yeah. This is just a rice cake. It's not a logo. <laughs> Number four looks like fries. Let's see, who's number four? Maybe he was rice, wrong. rice cakes inside a cup. Yeah. So yeah, more like, sometimes the first time we have to throw away. Number two is interesting. Let's see, number two, su girl sushi. But the sushi, see, is like a piece of tuna. Yeah. So it's yeah. like I, I wouldn't use a different food to to be the icon for your food. You know what I'm saying? So maybe if her body was a rice cake, that could work. But, but certainly you could save some of these ideas if you wanted to, you know, create, you know, something on the side about sushi, but it just doesn't fit this project. Correct. So number seven, number nine, and maybe number 12. Yeah. The kawaii thing. All right. Let's see, Rachel. <clears throat> Rachel really, um, really grasp the idea of the dark side. Yes, which this <laughs> is, right? And I was immediately drawn to number four, so. Yeah, I agree, I, do, I just was thinking that too. Number four is good. She has, to, I mean, you has got the white eyes and everything. You have to remember it's a beauty product, even though it is sort of gothy and all that, so. Uh, she should be beautiful and terrible at the same time, if you can make that happen. I also really liked number one with the moon and the dark waves. Yeah, that's another potential one. Um, number 12, um, I just feel like I've seen that before, but I, I was still drawn to it. Yeah, it looks like uh, there's a sportswear company that has mm -hmm. something like that. Um, the Raven is perhaps okay. I wouldn't put the type like that. But uh, the raven, you need to put some personality into the raven. So the raven is the um, beautiful woman somehow, if you could articulate that. So number one, number four, maybe number 11, maybe number six. You'd have to go a little further. Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> uh, that's fun. Uh, you definitely got the brand, so you're on a good path. But um, yeah, so that's why I say number one, number four, maybe number six or 11. So uh, let's see. Nikita. Peace cookies. Peace cookies, yeah. I like the panda. I like number one. These are all good. Uh, I think just, uh, so when the concepts are good, you just want to look at it quickly and sort of get what sort of jumps out of you visually, you know, has that cohesive look. So number eight, number one to me, what do you think, Sabrina? Um, yeah, you know what's interesting too? I don't know if you can see that the yin yang symbol, instead of being circles, they're like fortune cookies. Yeah. So, um, could work. 
Yeah, I think um, some of them are a little uh, dense in detail um, for a logo mark. Uh, so I would, I would go with more of the simpler ones, but I mean, they're beautiful sketches and they're very interesting. So. Yeah, so uh, I agree. Uh, uh, you know, the yin yang, because it's some, almost like a logo already and you're altering it. So I try to steer away from that. The, th the problem with uh, appropriating cultural icons is other people have the opportunity to use them as well. So it can be confusing. But um, definitely I like number eight. I like number one. What, what if she, instead of doing being like a yin yang, it just was that like, you know, just half of it, just the tear shape with the fortune cookie in it. I don't know. Yeah, that could work. Something maybe to explore. These yeah. are, this is a good job on this part of the assignment. Very good. What about the little face one, number 11? Yeah, number 11. I like that. It's cute. It took me a minute to see it. Um, but uh, maybe if it was executed so you could see it a little better. Like maybe the building, the eyes were more like eyes or. So you have, yeah, you have quite a few choices to play with. And, but I would say away from the more detailed ones. Yeah, like nine. Dragon, yeah. Even on uh, number five um, with the um, chevron zigzag, it kind of complicates it a little. Yeah, up here. Mm -hmm. Looks like a tooth. Yeah, that was my first thought too. <laughs> more than a cookie yeah yeah good job all right uh jordan shanghai cookie so this is what's confusing because they're similar products but not the same so shanghai cookies have uh they're dipped in chocolate these have philosophy you know uh new age philosophy fortunes and these are more irreverent funny fortunes so given that this is a reverent funny product, um, you could use some characters or something that is a little more fun. Right now I see a bunch of drawings of what the product might look like, mm -hmm. and those aren't logos. Yeah. So think symbolically, think of characters, think of things that can help you um, branch out from this uh, being just drawing a cookie. He says it in his response, you know, for the sketches, I found different references of fortune cookies and drew them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's not how you get a logo. Yeah. So, you know, here, um, you know, Shanghai. So like, um, oh, I guess number eight was Shanghai Tower. But yeah, there's some interesting buildings in the landscape of the city of Shanghai. So, uh, but I, those alone wouldn't be a logo, but if you t gave them some sort of twist or something, you know, maybe they're dipped in chocolate. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, keep exploring before you move to the next phase. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it for uh, section three. All right, Thomas, uh, Wacky Noodles. Um, you need to put these in the template so we can see them. It looks like a lot of drawings of bowls of noodles and written out words. So uh, you need to come up with logo icon symbols that represent Wacky Noodles and, uh, and put them into the uh, InDesign template with the numbers so that we can give you some proper feedback um, and don't do just bowls of noodles because that's kind of like just here's the product. That's not a logo. So there are characters and interesting fun things you could do with this. So since it's for kids, it's kind of wide open. Um, were the animal characters maybe that you can use as well? It looks a little bit more like in a thumbnail stage than the actual like logo sketching stage. You yeah. Know? So like, you know, where you get ideas on paper rather quickly, rather, you know, and then, so I, I'd like to see, you know, just more refinement. Um. Right. Uh, okay, Whitley, these are uh, cactus cookies. 
cactus cookies from the southwest so you picked up a little southwestern pattern here these are nice sketches um just quick glance i like number four uh yeah, i like i like number six sort of waving at you uh <laughs> Number five has some weight to it, some interest. So there's something. I think these are uh, these. There's a lot of potential here. So, um, you have any thoughts, Sabrina? Or? Yeah, I, I really like how she incorporated, you know, those motifs into it so successfully. So there's a lot of good ideas going on here. So yeah. Yeah, that's great. Good job. This is what we're looking for. Number exactly. Two, I think might be interesting too. Like if she had colored the cookie part in, um, then we could really have seen the counter space. Yes. Uh, which you can easily do in Illustrator if you want to try that out. Uh, but yeah, I'm sort of going for uh, what did I say? Number four, number mm -hmm. six, and maybe maybe number eleven if it had something in the mi middle. I think you were leaning toward five as well, but. Five, yeah, I like five. Good job. Yeah, very good. Christina. And uh, this is YOLO cookies. You only live once. They're full of calories and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the lips, the uh, mouth with the tongue hanging out makes me think of Andy Warhol. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> But that's kind of the brand you're getting it. Here's the cookie with sunglasses, kind of smug looking. Uh, I like that. That sort of gets the brand. These are stretched, though. I hate that. Uh, don't just fit uh, the image to the tech to the picture frame. You want to fit it proportionally so that you don't stretch things. Parachuting. This is the word YOLO with a cookie and something. I wouldn't do a, a like pictogram type thing. Uh, this looks like the cookie, and uh, now he's had a bite out of his head. Uh, let's see, what's number six? It's like Angel Demon. Oh, yeah. Angel Demon. So, I would think more like a split screen, maybe. Could, that could work. That's an interesting idea. A heart. Uh, I like number four. Um, there's maybe more exploration could be done with the angel demon thing to bring that out. I think that there are other characters you could bring out. Uh, if you think about like, for instance, uh, Cheetos and they have the cheetah. So, okay. Cheetah is, it seems cheesy because <laughs> you've got the word Cheetos and then you have a cheetah, but he had tons. He oozed personality. He had those sunglasses. He has a way of speaking. So you kind of want to like find that type of character and see if you can articulate that more. Uh, the parachuting, you only live once, so like activities and stuff like that, it's a little hard to sort of connect that with this cookie. Um, the cookie is really hedonistic, indulgent, all kind of uh, that kind of thing. So if you think about somebody who, well, you did the devil, so. Uh, His favorites were 6, 10, 11, and 12. 6, 10, 11, and 12. Yeah, because they all have the cookie. The heart, maybe. <laughs> Oozing chocolate. It's maybe give you a heart attack. Uh, all right, Nicole, this is uh, salty dog caramel, sea salt caramels. So these are for. Uh, people who would like alternative older people kind of stuck in the mud, tough, tough old birds who, uh, who like something different. The attitude on the dogs are really great. I understand why you did a lot of dogs because it's called salty dog. Um, I like several of these. The thing is you put the word mark in. So it's like, just think of the icon and you'll add the word mark next. But uh, I like number 12. I like mm -hmm. number two. Yeah. Uh, Number five, doing the word mark this way might be problematic, but it, it has that 1960s kind of cartoon look, which I really like. These are all good. I don't know why they're so dark though. This is a high contrast. Take them in Photoshop, and make a, the background white. 
yeah you got any um other thoughts sabrina they i don't they're very, very creative um yeah i mean i just enjoyed looking at them each one you know was so creative so even in like you know just i like the, there was different explorations like with the lighthouse and things like that yeah oh. this, this is like a mean that mean poodle the mean little dog that <laughs> There's some good stuff here. So yeah, I'm recommending two, five, and 12 maybe. It does have that like, you know, it does match the era well, so. Yeah, it's got a bit of a soul bass almost like kind of look. Mm. Oh, look at the inspiration. Sea sort caramels, there they are. This <laughs> <Doxin. laughs> All right. Uh, Blood orange chocolate. So this is chocolate with uh, infused with Spanish spices. It has a sort of appeal as an exotic alternative, you know, change of pace chocolate. Um, and you have not put them in the template as required. Uh, and they're quite large. So we're going to have to go through these. So orange slices with chocolate. So that's like the product. It looks like it's sideways. These are all sideways. So, I mean, when you post something, take a look at what you posted, see if it looks right. Uh, this is more oranges and chocolate. Here's a chocolate bar with a bite out of it and orange juice coming out. Here's a couple of oranges with a chocolate bar. Here's a chocolate bar with some orange slices melting. Uh, here looks like another chocolate bar melting. Uh, this looks like orange slices with a couple pieces of chocolate. This looks like an orange with a bite out of it. And uh, it's chocolate on the inside. Okay, this is the first thing that's kind of like an idea, like something different. So that's one thing. This is a repeat of the melting chocolate. Another repeat. Orange with melting chocolate bite. Um, yeah, these are, there are a lot of redundancy, enormous amount of redundancy. All right, here's a dagger stagging, stabbing the orange, <laughs> dripping blood. Uh, more of the same, another bowl. All right, so when you think of the exotic spices, this kind of being Spanish and all that, look at Spanish culture, look at uh, characters from that place. It's their um, people. Uh, you know, costumes, patterns, things like that, that could add to your ideation, because right now you're just trying to draw pictures of the product. Uh, the one idea, maybe an orange with chocolate inside, uh, that's so, something taking an ordinary object, making it different, so that's a plus. Uh, the melting and turning into orange juice, um, First of all, the sort of grid of chocolate makes me think of a Hershey bar, which is very low end. And this chocolate would be kind of a high end, like Godiva type chocolate. So um, don't do Hershey, when melting Hershey bars. When you're sketching, you have to think too, um, in terms of like black and white, like these aren't going to be just stroke, you know, yeah. objects, like, you know, but they're, you know, they're probably going to be more of a solid color. Um, so you want to try to sketch in such a way that it can be filled easily and not have to you know be dependent on the gradient so for definition yeah. all right all right nicole has also gotten salty dog so i don't know oh this is this nicole again oh. oh that's your word list she just posted her word list okay this is on the path to being good. I love it. You use different fonts, different colors. You're making good use of the page. Uh, I just wish the word simple came down a little further, but yeah, looks good. All right, one more section. All right, so this is Ashley, Bermuda tea. So this is a very um, traditional English tea, but from Bermuda. Um, you've got some nautical elements. You've got the Bermuda Triangle, which is what everyone thinks of when they think of Bermuda, um, a spaceship. Uh, I think that number three, uh, number 11 jumps out as a potential. That's the one that stood out to me immediately. Yeah. 
Um, I think that number nine might also be interesting. Um, I'm not sh sure about the diamond shape per se, because that's going to make, you know, especially trying to fit the text in there. Um, I think the text should be separate, but. Uh, You're doing a Bermuda Triangle with the tropical fish in it. It's kind of cool. That's a good idea. So I'd do that. I like the whale for sure. Mm -hmm. This one sort of evokes the idea of the fancy traditional English tea, which this is, but then if you put a twist on this, like how is this teapot uh, executed so that it relates to Bermuda a little more, so. Uh, I, think, I think that if you look at the, no, that's the Bahamas, Never mind. I was thinking of their heraldry, but I'm getting them confused. Well, uh, yeah, Bermuda was, um, discovered by a uh, shipwreck from the English explorers. And uh, uh, so it has a very English heritage. Mm -hmm. It was actually the topic which inspired the play, The Tempest by Shakespeare. Um, <laughs> I'm full of unnecessary information. All right, I own a street. <laughs> Iona streets are hand dipped uh, pretzel rods. Uh, they're kind of a celebratory thing. They've got a Scottish sort of feeling to them. I think that some of these uh, have that feeling. So this is a very sort of blurry scan. It's not put into the template. You need to put this in the InDesign template, which had all the numbers on it. It's all set up for you. So I don't know why so many people are not using it. Um, this is like a fleur de lis, which- That's French. Yeah, it's French. This is like a initials IT with a pretzel rod, a flower. Oh, here's a, here's a, a flower. This is another flower and a diamond. Uh, number five, a flower with a diamond bud. Okay, well, that's kind of taking a different take on it. I'm not quite connecting it, but a fleur de lis with a floral design. So, yeah. Um, this is another pattern. So you've got, you've got to covered some patterns and motifs like that. I, you know, like maybe number seven would work as a, a logo. Uh, don't do this initials. This doesn't even really look like anything when you see it. So, um, the face in the negative space here in 10, I like that. It feels like it needs some refinement to be able to really see it clearly. Uh, number 11 is another diamond. So whenever, when you're writing out your idea descriptions and you use the word another, that should be a red flag <laughs> to you that you've gotten redundant, you know, uh, I do think that there are other uh, areas that you could explore for this, but um, so far I would say number seven, maybe number 10. Uh, this is, you know, I'm looking up and the, the thistle is the like flower motif that's most associated with Scotland. Yeah, and that's why I thought number five kind of looked like that. So. So maybe the thistle becomes your yeah, Idea. and then of course, you know, they add a lot of Viking symbols too, but you have to be careful to make sure, it, you know, the knot work doesn't look too Irish. It actually keeps more of the Scottish flair. Um, yeah, agreed. Um, all right, heaven, saffron cookies. All right, so these are not numbered. They're not placed in the template and their word marks and a cookie. So you need to go back and reread the assignment, Heaven, and make sure you put these in the InDesign template and I'll give you a review if you want that. So, um, you know, let me know. You know, um, Dover Books has the time. It, it'll All right, Aria. So again, not in the template, not numbered. Uh, this is um, McFeeney's Irish Snacks. So they have a sort of Irish thing to them. Uh, okay, so that's a four leaf clover made of cheese. This looks like a Celtic symbol 
in a wedge of cheese, uh, the Celtic knot. In a cheese it's, ball then. <laughs> yeah. With a pot of gold. Uh, this one is uh, a tree of life with cheese. Uh, this is that, the arms, the Kladach ring uh, with cheese in the middle. Uh, it's a Celtic cross with cheese. We're glorifying the cheese. Uh, all right, I like this one, the pot of gold with the farm. That's interesting. Yeah. Here's the rainbow with the pot of gold. Uh, this one is a slice of cheese with wings. Uh, I, okay, so I like number, whatever this is, eight. Seven? Okay. Uh, I think uh, this is too religious. <laughs> As is, I think. they sold at a nunnery, it would make sense, but, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Like souvenir shops, but yeah, not for a broad product. Uh, this is too complicated. Uh, there's too much detail going on in here. Um, and it kind of looks... Maybe simplify the knot work. Yeah. And, and eliminate the cheese. So. All right. So this, uh, the, the cal she's calling it the uh, triketra, which I was like the Celtic knot that goes around and around. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like another logo, like somebody else's logo almost. Like, and it's often used as a symbol for the Trinity. Yeah. So, so maybe not. Um, this, one, this one visually had some interest, so maybe there's something there. Uh, this one doesn't read. You can't tell what it is. But you could maybe refine that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Turn, yeah, more clover, less cheese, and it would read a little better um and then when so. you get to the coloring stage it might be interesting but yeah definitely the other one up, up. yeah this one, that one. Mm -hmm. uh i like the description of this but it's not i'm not really able to see it clearly the way it's executed it's a wheelbarrow the wheelbarrow could have the cheese in it maybe ditch the clover Keep it simple. And this one doesn't doesn't read. You can't tell what it is. All right. Uh, Stephen. So this is a Green Mountain Maple Candy. It's got mint in it. It's maple candy with mint. So it's a little different than typical maple candy. It comes to New England. So we've got a maple leaf with a mountain, a cup of tea with a or coffee with a maple leaf, a mint leaf with mountains a maple leaf with Vermont, a tree being tapped with syrup, a bottle of maple syrup with mountains on it. Uh, this looks like a bowl with, let's see, number seven is a bowl of candy with mint leaves. This is like the initials on candy wrappers, he says. Um, a cookie jar with a maple leaf, a uh, moose. Uh, this is another tree, maple tree. And this is a heart and a maple leaf. You know, the moose, it would be kind of interesting if the, um, what are those things that come off the ears called again? Um, antlers. Yeah, the antlers. If the antlers were almost in the shape of maple leaves. Yeah, try that. That's one idea. Um, I think this is approaching an idea, but the frame kind of kills it. Like uh, maybe you can create the negative space in the maple leaf with the heart. Um, the mountains make a compelling image, but I've, I thought number one might had some potential, but so number one, number 10, maybe number 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, that is it. That's it. Thank you, Peter. Thank you so much.